family, welcome back to my channel. I am really excited to be doing this look today. It is something really different that I've never tried before. What I'm going to be doing today is a pixelated look. I'm only going to be using skin tone colors today from the Wolf palette, number 14, number 15, number 17, number 19, number 25. I'll also be using some Wolf White and some Tag White. So I'm gonna start by removing the makeup. Oh my God, this lipstick is so hard to get off. <laughs> on my teeth. I'm rethinking lipstick. Why? All right, so now that I look like I got punched in the face, right here, I've decided to tone it down on the lipstick before I do skin tone colored looks. I'm very smart. So we're gonna start out by just looking at our features. Now, everybody has different skin tones, and I found that with the darker tones, if you want to change them to make them more appropriate for your own skin, just mix them with the color that's lower. For instance, nothing on my face is this dark, right? But some of you may be darker than this. If that's the case, you may wanna mix an even darker color with this, whether it's black or an even deeper brown. I'm probably going to be mixing this with the next color down, which is this one, or even one of the colors that's even lighter. If my face was going to be censored or pixeled out, then they would just be pixelating over the eye makeup that I already have. So I really didn't even need to take off all that torturous makeup, but since my lips are already smudgy to begin with, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna put red over them anyway. Great, it all worked out. See what I said about happy mistakes in the last video? Happy mistake, right there, yeah. Always thinking ahead. So I'm gonna start out with a brush that is square, or flat rather, and I, if I wanted to make them super tiny pixels all over my face, I could use a brush that's this big, right? So really small, but I don't wanna do that today because I think it would take much too long and you guys would be sitting through a much longer video. So today I'm going to be using a brush that's this big, and you can see on my hand, I made a little sample of just what the, how big the pixels will actually look. My skin is also fair, so I may be mixing some pink into the mix as well. I'm gonna be using a tag, regular pink for my pink tones, and probably a wolf red for my lips, since my lips are pretty stained right now. I'm gonna get started with the lighter skin tones first, and I'm going to strategically place them in the places on my face that are that are highlighted. So if you're wondering where the highlights are on your face, think about where the light, the lightest spots on your face would be if you were in the sun or if there was a light source looking at you. I have a light source in front of me, so the lighter parts of my face are going to be the planes that are the flattest, right? These planes on my face that go back a little bit further, anything that's curved or where you can see a shadow, those planes are going to be a little bit darker. This is basic shading. And this is actually something that you can apply to makeup or special effects or anything that's blending, drawing, painting. So I'm gonna start out with the lightest color, which is my number 14, as you can see. And I'm just going to be working in squares, okay? So basically, you're gonna lay down the brush and just drag it into the size square that you want to create. So it looks like what's going to work better for my skin tone is a color that looks more like this right here. Here. That means I'm going to mix this color in with a tag white and also that tag pink that we talked about earlier. So as you can see, I'm extending this square past my nose because if you can see it from the front when my head is down like this, it's going to look more two dimensional than if my face is up like this. And this may look crazy right now, but it will get evened out later. And whenever we put a, a pixel next to another pixel, we wanna make sure that the, the shade is slightly different because even though some of them may look the same and it looks like there's several pixels that are connected in almost an L shape or a T shape, kind of like Tetris, they're actually not. They're a very slight variation in the color. And that's what makes them come across as kind of like a blanket smeary look. Now this is when I'm going to start mixing some of the colors. So I've gotten some of my brighter planes that are going to be the lightest, right? Now I'm going to start mixing some of the color that's right next to it on the color scale. So this one right here is a little bit darker than this one over here. So I'm going to start putting some of these 
pixels from the darker color on my face now next to the lighter ones that we just did. I'm going to mix with the next color up, which is this one. And I'm also starting to go onto the darker areas of my face. It's the in-between colors that seem to be the trickiest. So those are the colors that you're going to be mixing together. I'm mixing the lightest color and the third to lightest color. That, those are the colors that are gonna make the biggest difference. Those are the ones that really make this look come alive. I'm noticing the areas that are going to be a little bit darker for me. So I'm gonna start mixing in some of the darker colors with some of the lighter colors to get those in-between shades and then we'll decide exactly how dark I really need to go. Also, what I'm noticing about this is that it's really easy to follow your jawline, but instead of doing that, I'm gonna try and make these as straight across as possible. You want them to look even because that is going to give you the best chance of looking two-dimensional. I am actually going to use my darkest color right now, but I'm going to mix the darkest color in with the second to darkest color. Also, it doesn't have to be symmetrical, so I could pretend like my light source is coming from here, and this whole side could be very, very light, whereas this side would be a lot darker in contrast. It just depends on where you want your light source to be coming from, and you could completely make up where your light source is coming from, which is the beauty of the illusion. Now this right here is kind of a fun trick. When you are creating a two-dimensional image, sometimes what it looks like when you look from one direction actually looks completely different when you look straight on. So as you can see, when I turn to the side, this looks like a long rectangle, right? But when you look straight on, it looks more like a square. You want them to all look like squares. But it's just because the angle changes that it makes it look like a totally different shape, which is really amazing. But in that way, it makes you kind of have to overcompensate for the shape that you are creating. If you find it necessary to mix three colors, mixing is definitely your friend with this one. Another one of the areas that you might want to overcompensate with is right here on the bridge of your nose. So on the bridge of your nose, it's not gonna look as flat if you just paint on the top of the bridge of the nose. You may have to actually go over to the sides and you may have to go way over the sides depending on the shape of your nose. So if your nose is a little bit flatter, then this might be a little bit easier to give the illusion that <laughs> it's in fact flat. My nose sticks up a little bit further and because of that, I need to overcompensate and make sure that I get the sides over here so that when I'm looking straight on, you can see the sides a little bit easier. And I may even need to lighten the edges of the sides so that you can see it straight on, even if it's not the, sh the same shade as the color on top. And I'm actually gonna go in with a smaller brush in order to make that happen for me. A pixelation, it's not going to be in the exact same shape as the shape of your body feature. If it's going over my eye, it's not necessarily going to be in the shape of an eye, but it's going to look like a couple of different pixels placed next to each other that are different colors. So, same thing goes for the eyebrow, right? So it's gonna kinda look like a smeared eyebrow, but in blocks, if that makes any sense. Maybe, maybe not. Oh. Lipstick teeth. I hate it. very delicious. I needed a snack. So I'm gonna go over the eyebrows and I'm going to use the second to darkest shade of brown. It's this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and close my eye and line it up to the last one that I did. I have a, I guess, more pronounced brow bone, right? I wanna make sure that I'm not actually catering to the curves of the brow bone. I want to look at any flat surface and measure it up against that. So you can see, if I ever need any help, I can always take my brush, right? And make sure that these lines here are going to be the same as this line right here. It's really easy for me to just, oh, I'm gonna put some brown here, but if I just did that, it would actually probably curve a little bit. So that's that overcompensating that we were talking about. And I have to do it on both eyes, probably my lips as well. Definitely my lips and my nose and everything else that's not flat, which is most of my face. Okay. Maybe it is a little bit easier to use a smaller brush 
looks like that's what I'm starting to do. Duh. I'm gonna... So at this point, my forehead is starting to bow out this way, right? So again, overcompensating, making sure that when I look straight on, it still looks like a square. Once I almost lift the corner of this square, it looks a little bit flatter from straight on than it did before. And I'm really starting to play with mixing my colors. I'm mixing several colors now. I don't wanna just have the same three or four combinations on my face. I think it's gonna work best if there are so many different kinds of tones. For the eyes, I'm going to actually paint white over the inside of my eye right here, and then a grayish white next to it. And the grays that we use are gonna be super light. I have hooded eyelids, and because of that, it's a little bit harder for me to paint on my eyelid and then open my eye immediately because my lids are, I have several folds in them. I don't know why, just do. It's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes, but I mean, whatever. So what I'm gonna do is pack some powder on there. And now I'm gonna do straight white right next to it. Now I'm gonna go in and do any missing spaces. So I have some edges missing over here. I'm gonna go in there with some of the darker shades which won't be as noticeable anyway from the front. I'll be using pink, red, and white for the lips. All right, I think we have it. So hopefully I look pixelated to you guys. I feel kind of crazy. Hopefully this helped you guys. If you want to do something like this for Halloween, you could do this on different parts of the body. You could do it over some sort of covering, like a bra or underwear. You could pre-paint it before you put it on something skin colored and I think it'd be really funny if you were comfortable going out like that. If not, feel free to just do your face. So I hope you guys had fun. Thanks again for checking out my video today. I'm looking forward to sharing more looks with you in the future. So if you'd like to see more looks, please subscribe to my channel and also give it a big thumbs up. And if you'd really like to, you can share it with your friends, but that's just because you really love me. I look forward to seeing you in the future, and thanks so much again for stopping by my channel. Cuddle. He's a very happy kitty. Okay, time to get down.